Hello, my name is Alan Entz. As a volunteer firefighter, I was involved in a serious grain bin incident in 2009. That incident took the life of our fire chief and injured four firefighters, including myself. Grain bins can be dangerous and they deserve respect. Although each situation is different, the number one cause of death for workers in grain bins is grain engulfment. Approximately 92% of the people who are fully engulfed do not survive and total engulfment only takes a matter of seconds. Grain flowing out of a storage facility may look like it's moving slowly and rather harmless. Behind me is an 8,000 bushel storage facility. Although small, it can still hold close to half a million pounds of product. Becoming trapped can be deadly. We are here today at Stored Products Research and Education Center at Oklahoma State University to tell you the reason grain engulfment occurs, how it happens, how we can prevent it, and what can be done if someone becomes engulfed. We'll also talk about other hazards of which employees and rescue personnel need to be aware of. This video presentation is not meant to be a standalone course on the rescue of victims trapped in grain engulfment. It is designed to support learning, teaching, and exchanging information about grain engulfment at the awareness level. The information presented here is not absolute. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration regulations set forth requirements that must be followed any time employees enter an area where grain is being stored. These standards are known as the Grain Handling Facilities Regulations and OSHA's General Industry Regulations. Are you okay? Every year, people die as a result of grain engulfment and entrapment incidences. All of these are preventable. For our purposes, entrapment means when a person is covered with grain between the knees and the waist, rendering them unable to remove themselves from the grain without assistance. Engulfment is when a person is covered in grain up to the shoulder or above. Grain engulfment can happen in all sizes and kinds of storage facilities, from a small on-farm storage unit to large terminal elevators. Each size, type, and location presents its own sets of problems and circumstances. Grain engulfment incidences are not specific to grain storage facilities. They can also happen in transportation vehicles such as hopper bottom grain trailers and railroad cars. There are three basic ways grain engulfment usually happens. Flowing grain, grain bridge collapse, or vertical grain wall collapse. The first type of grain engulfment involves flowing grain. 77% of engulfment occurs while a bin is being unloaded. Many of these are a result of an employee entering a bin because the grain has stopped flowing, but leaving the unloading equipment running. Once the grain begins to flow, the worker is pulled into the grain. As long as the unloading system is not running or all unloading openings are closed, there is no grain movement. However, once the unloading system is engaged and the unloading gate is open, grain will start to move. A 10 inch auger can unload up to 65 bushels of grain per minute. The grain forms a funnel shaped cone on the top, pulling down anything on the surface. A worker has about two to three seconds to react. Within four to five seconds, your knees are covered. You'll be unable to free yourself without assistance due to the amount of pressure and friction the grain exerts around your legs. It won't be possible to simply step out of it. Once the grain is above a person's knees, it is physically impossible to free the legs without a lifeline or grabbing onto a support structure. While wearing a lifeline may not help you escape, it will keep you from being pulled further into the grain. Within 22 seconds, you will be covered and your chance of survival is very slim. No one should be allowed in a grain bin with moving grain. To prevent this, all receiving and unloading equipment needs to be tagged and locked out. Your facility must have procedures developed for bin entry. Employees need to follow those procedures in order to help ensure there will not be a grain engulfment. Another way people are trapped in grain is from grain bridging. When grain becomes wet and moldy, it can stick together. If the grain becomes a solid mass on the top surface, unloading it may create a cavity below. Bridging can occur anywhere in the bin. The surface will look solid and undisturbed, but it may hide a cavity that is dangerous to walk on. 
All employees who are allowed to enter a grain bin must wear a harness and lifeline. If the grain has been unloaded, there should be a dip or inverted cone on the surface. The best way to break up a known grain bridge is to address it from outside the bin. Grain quality management is critical in preventing a grain bridge. The third cause of engulfment is from grain wall collapse. Like grain bridges, grain walls are the result of wet grain that cakes into one large mass on the bin wall or another location within the bin. Freestanding columns of grain can also form. Entering a bin with a grain wall is extremely dangerous due to the potential of the wall collapsing. Employees should never work with grain above their heads. Emergency responders need to be aware that additional grain may be bridged or clinging to the wall. This could collapse on them during the rescue operation. An engulfment victim's greatest threat to their life is suffocation caused by the pressure of the grain against their chest and torso. As the victim exhales, the pressure of the grain continues to increase on their chest until they can no longer expand their lungs to inhale. This is known as compression asphyxia. Totally engulfed victims usually die from inhaling the grain, which blocks their airway and suffocates them. These type of victims rarely survive. Grain quality management is a key to safety because employees will not have to enter a bin. Good quality grain is considered dry enough to store. Wet grain will cause grain temperatures to rise, early insect infestation, mold, mildew, and grain clumping. These conditions cause the grain to stick together, leading to the formation of grain bridges and grain walls. Grain quality will not improve once it's in the bin. It will only continue to deteriorate unless it's monitored and steps are taken to reduce or eliminate the problem. An example of quality management is temperature monitoring. Grain harvested during the hot summer is put in the bin at temperatures close to the outside air temperature. Soon after harvest, aeration fans need to be run. This will equalize the grain temperature and moisture for storage through the summer months. If the outside temperature is cooler than the inside temperature, condensation will form. The condensation will drip from the roof panels onto the stored grain, leading to moisture problems inside the bin. The grain then needs to be cooled as the outside temperatures decrease to avoid the hot air mass in the bin from rising to the cooler roof. Properly sized and spaced aeration fans can move cooler outside air through the grain during the nighttime hours and exhaust the hot air to the outside. Another problem with warm grain is that the potential for insect activity increases anytime the temperature of the grain exceeds 70 degrees Fahrenheit. A rise in temperature can also be an indicator of insect activity or deteriorating grain. Grain put in storage that has a lot of trash in it due to poor farming and harvesting practices can also cause storage problems. Not only is a trashy grain more conducive to insect infestation, but dockage has a tendency to collect at the discharge openings during removal where it can stop the flow of grain. Without a doubt, the more grain facilities can do to maintain good grain quality will eliminate the risk for employees needing to enter a bin. This would eliminate the risk of employee grain engulfment. Regardless how well the grain quality is managed, there are going to be times that employees will need to enter grain bins. Therefore, procedures must be developed to ensure safe entry. Employees must be trained and must follow these procedures. Once the employees have a good understanding of bin entry procedures, a bin entry permit must be completed and signed off on. The bin entry permit is a checklist outlining required tasks that must be followed to enter the bin. The first item of the bin entry procedure is to make sure that all grain receiving and unloading equipment is locked out and tagged out before entry. Test the air inside the grain bin. If the oxygen level is below 19.5%, the bin must be ventilated before anyone is allowed to enter. Properly trained employees and rescue personnel may use a self-contained breathing apparatus known as an SCBA to enter the bin. The grain bin also must be tested for toxic gases. If the grain has been treated with aluminum phosphide to kill insects, phosphine gas could still be present inside the bin. Phosphine gas above 0.3 parts per million is very toxic to humans. In this 8,000 bushel bin, 
This two and a half cups of grain represents one part per million. Periodic monitoring should be done by direct reading instruments. If these levels are above 0.3 parts per million, personnel must exit the area or use proper protective equipment. Grain exposed to excess of moisture can decompose and release potentially toxic gases such as methane and hydrogen sulfide. These gases, as well as phosphine gas, are flammable under the right conditions. Decomposition also depletes the oxygen and creates carbon dioxide, which can lead to oxygen deficiency and or carbon dioxide poisoning. Employees should be trained on the proper methods of testing, as well as the appropriate procedures to be taken if the atmosphere is found to be oxygen deficient, toxic, or combustible. When entering a grain bin, an employee must wear a safety harness attached to a lifeline if there is a possibility the employee can sink more than waist deep in grain. As this demonstration shows, flowing grain quickly pulls the victim down to the point that escape is virtually impossible. Once the grain is above a person's knees, it is physically impossible to free the legs without a lifeline or grabbing onto a support structure. And when the victim is buried in grain up to his or her waist, there is no chance of self-rescue. Training must be provided on the proper use of the harness, and the harness and lifeline need to be inspected to ensure they will not fail during the entry process. Adequate lighting must be made available to employees before they enter the grain structure. Any lights used inside a grain bin need to be designated for use in areas where combustible dust may be present. These lights must be explosion proof. Employees who are going to enter grain bins need to be trained and have a thorough understanding of the hazards associated with entry into bins, silos, and tanks. Most fatal grain engulfment incidences occur when a person is working alone. All employees entering a grain bin should have an observer present on the outside to monitor. And something goes wrong, it could be a long time before anybody knows there was a problem. There have been situations where no one realized an employee was trapped in a bin until a family member called to ask why their loved one never came home from work. The observer must have communication established with the person inside the grain bin, take? no matter how long the entrant plans on being inside that bin. He's gonna take another five or 10 minutes. This can be line of sight and verbal communications, or it can be two-way radio okay. communications. If electronic communication devices are to be used, they must be approved for use in explosive dust situations. The observer must also have a source of communication so he or she can quickly contact emergency responders for assistance in the event of an emergency. Employees who serve as observers in bin entry should be trained in basic rescue emergency procedures and know how to obtain additional resources and personnel if necessary. In an emergency situation, the observer should never enter the space until additional help has arrived. It is recommended that an employee trained in CPR be readily available to provide help to those employees entering bins, silos, or tanks. Employees need to make sure grain is in good condition before entering into a grain bin. The inside of the bin must be inspected to make sure there are no grain bridges, or grain stuck to the sidewalls. Entry must be prohibited until these conditions have been eliminated. Anyone who is called to help rescue an engulfed victim, whether an employee or emergency responder, needs to be aware that there are numerous other potential hazards before they enter a grain storage unit. Many people are allergic to grain dust and unfortunately, some may not know it until they are exposed. Grain containing mold can add to the problem. When this happens, the rescuer may become part of the problem instead of the solution. Respirators designed to filter dust and mold can be used to help lessen the problem of allergic reactions. Another hazard responders need to be aware of is the potential for a grain dust, fire, or explosion. Grain dust is a fuel and with adequate oxygen and ignition source can combust. As this demonstration shows, if the dust is in suspension, the result can be a flash fire. In a confined space, the energy released will expand and the pressure exerted can cause a grain dust explosion. 
Rescue workers need to consider precautions to prevent a fire or explosion from happening. Care should be taken if spark or flame generating equipment is going to be used during rescue operations. Grain handling facilities and the grain stored at them can present many challenges to maintain grain quality and safety. Understanding the risks involved with flowing grain and the danger associated with grain quality that has been allowed to deteriorate is essential for the safety of all employees and the profitability of the facility. To avoid becoming entrapped or engulfed should you have to enter a bin, follow written policies and procedures, never work alone, never take shortcuts, train on an annual basis with fellow employees, create a safety culture and watch out for each other, and meet with emergency rescue personnel at your facility so they understand the risks involved should they ever need to assist in an emergency. Regular grain management practices to maintain grain quality greatly reduces the need to enter a bin, diminishing the possibility of you becoming a statistic. Your health, safety, and your life is far more important than any grain in a bin. Please follow your safety rules, communicate with employees, and work together to make sure everybody goes home safe. Thank you and be careful. Thank you.